Hi, this is Adrian and in this video we are going to cover some basics of getting started with the MUI Material Design Library version 5.11. We are going to learn how to import and work with the file, enable dark mode and finally how to make changes to the theme so you could make it your own. So without further introduction, let's switch to my screen so we can begin. <laughs> Let's start with importing the file uh, being kind of the first thing you usually start with. So to do that, uh, go to your drafts or your organization, then simply import the file from the import button. Now that I have the file ready, there are two ways to work with the library. One is to simply design your screens inside this exact file, which I do not particularly recommend because it is already heavy weighted as it is. But if you are on the free tier of Figma and uh, it might make more sense as it does not allow the feature of having uh, libraries. The other option is to add the file as a library and use it uh, to drag and drop components within any uh, file from that organization, which allows a much cleaner workflow as you can separate your apps, but still use the same library. To do that, simply go to the assets panel, click the library icon and click publish. Depending on your internet connection or Figma servers, it may take a while to finish publishing. Awesome, now that uh, we have the library set up, let's get into more exciting stuff like customizing the library. Now when it comes to colors, we have two available options to change them. The first is to edit those from the Token Studio plugin, which is a bit faster and I'll explain in a second why. And the other option is to simply uh, use the native tokens available on the right side panel. As I said, making changes using the plugin is totally optional, it doesn't do a lot of stuff besides allowing already defined tokens to be used in other tokens, which I think is called composition. Uh, this enables us to compose states a bit faster because we can um, use one color to generate another one, like for example a hover token which would be 0.4% uh, of the main color. So taking advantage of this composition feature we can automate some color changes pretty fast. So let's open token studio, go to the group mode you want to edit the colors as you can have different colors for each mode. Uh, and let's change the primary color from blue to indigo. As you can probably notice, the state's tokens for hover, selected and so on have been also updated automatically because of the feature of creating a color dynamically. As mentioned above, the other option is to simply make changes using Figma's own tokens in case you don't want to use a third party plugin, which is totally fine as well. So to do that, let's open the primary group and click the edit icon uh, where you can simply change your new color. For the dark and light shades, you can obviously choose your own, but uh, if you need any uh, help with that, there's a tool on the MUI website that can help you generate the dark and light shades from any color you want. As a warning coming from someone who got very frustrated with the, with the Token Studio plugin is to kind of decide the road you're going to take or simply said, will you make changes using the right side panel or through Token Studio plugin? And that's because the, uh, the plugin doesn't automatically sync in with the native tokens, uh, which might cause a problem when you open the plugin again and apply uh, and try to apply the old known tokens. To kind of show you how much time you can save with Token Studio, uh, let's change the global border radius, which by default is for pixels. So let's open the plugin, go to the border radius group, and then edit the value to 16. As you can tell, all the components have been synced which was super fast and normally you would have to go into each component and change its border radius individually. But with Token Studio we can make changes pretty fast. Now that we understand how tokens work, let's also change the, the font family token which is in the typography group down here. 
As you can tell, we named the global phone family Roboto because we assumed not all people will use one single font uh, throughout the whole library. For instance, uh, you would have a font for headings and a font for body. And if that's the case, you need to define it here first and then go to the heading styles above and change uh, from the Roboto token to your new font token like Inter. But if you are like me and you really like to be consistent, meaning one single global font, we can simply rename this token into something like fontfamily.global, it doesn't really matter, and then Token Studio will take care of renaming the instances from, you know, fontfamily.roboto into fontfamily.global. And now instead of Roboto, let's change to something more with personality like Poppins. No need to click uh, the update because the plugin automatically saves my changes and applies them. Great, so we covered the essentials. Let's see how we can enable the dark mode for the entire library. As you can probably guess, we can do that pretty easily using Token Studio plugin. Uh, so let's open that up and simply check or tick. Uh, the box, uh, the group you want to enable, which in my case, uh, I want to enable the dark mode. Let's also change the color mode of Figma to dark mode and voila, we have the dark mode enabled. So that was for today, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to open an issue on, uh, on our GitHub repo, which is linked down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.